Hi there, welcome to today's video, which is all about Halloween pumpkins. Well, polymer clay pumpkins. I don't know why it's taken me so long to make a Halloween pumpkin tutorial. I expected I'd have done something like that way before now, but I do have an old tutorial in the vault that you can see up there. Um, it's just a very basic one, but I'm focusing more on specific Halloween pumpkins today. The first will be a more traditional kind of design, and the second will focus a bit more on kind of character design really, so um, I'm sure there's uh, one for everybody. And I'm going to be getting messy with some paint today, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I don't often use paint with my pieces, so yeah, it's a bit of a, a new thing for today. Hope you enjoy! So to start, I'm making my own orange colour clay, as I haven't any in the studio. So I'm using yellow here with a tiny bit of red added. And for the centre, I need to create just a ball of dark clay. And I'm just going to flatten out the orange clay a little further. It's just been through the pasta roller. And I'll wrap the orange clay around the black. And remove some excess clay just with my scissors here. And I'll just roll that so it uh, wraps around the black clay really nicely. So now it resembles like a small tangerine. And with my trusty scalpel, I'll start cutting into the clay like so. So I'm going to start with the eyes. And I'm just doing an outline first, um, really so I can plot out where the elements will go before I start actually removing the clay. And moving on to the mouth. And this can be a little tricky, so you might need to spend a little bit of time doing this. I'm going to go for a traditional kind of evil looking pumpkin, but you know, you can do whatever face you like really. And you'll find that once you've handled your clay for any length of time, um, well certainly if you've got warm hands like I have, that you'll need to let it rest now and again just to kind of cool down really. Because nobody likes warm polymer clay because uh, you know, it doesn't really do what you want it to. So I'll just go back to the eyes now and I'm going to start removing the clay with my scalpel as best as I can. And onto the second eye. And it may well take a few attempts just to get a neat line going on. As with all my videos, apologies for any background noise that you hear today. Um, my studio is on a pretty busy road, so it tends to pick up all sorts of background noise, but I'll do my best to edit as much as I can out. So I'm now starting to remove the clay from the mouth. And again, it's a really fiddly process, so I'd make sure that you've got kind of a fair bit of time to devote to yours. It's not something that can be rushed, really. I do like a pumpkin at Halloween. I think Ian and I will get some this weekend and uh, attempt one each. So I'm cutting in a nose now, just because I think it needs it really. And with my medium size ball tool, I'll pop a hole just in the top and from there I'm using my needle tool to create a series of grooves around the uh, pumpkin and uh, they're quite deep. And I'll just pop a little hole in the bottom just so I've got a point of reference where to line my lines up to. So now I've been around the whole pumpkin creating some deep grooves. I'm going to start on a series of um, just smaller mark making really, just to make it look a little more convincing as a pumpkin because I'm going for a more traditional kind of look on this one. So 
And again, you'll probably have to put your work down every now and again, just to let it cool down. Because you'll end up with loads of fingerprints otherwise. Well, I know that I do. So it's a good exercise in learning how to use your needle tool, if anything. So I'm just going to use my ball tool again just to redefine that hole and with some brown clay I'm just going to pop some in the top here just for the, uh, the pumpkin top and because I've been handling it again I'm just going around with my needle tool just to add a little bit more definition here and there. So yeah pretty pleased with that. So I'm going to make a second pumpkin now, just to give a, a bit of variety really, just to show how kind of versatile little Halloween polymer clay pumpkins are and the different kind of looks that you can go for. So I'm, I'm doing very similar stuff. Um, you can use just a, a straight ball of orange clay, but I've got some dark in the middle of this one just to really save on, on orange clay. Or you could use some foil inside if you wanted to, just to save on your clay. So with my ball tool I'm going to this time create a couple of eye sockets and I've just got like a random tool here just to create a little mouth shape. Oops I don't know where that piece of black has come from. Makes it kind of look quite jolly really doesn't it. So I'm going to start with my needle tool again and firstly create a series of fairly deep grooves. And I'll let it cool again and I'll start going around with some much more shallow kind of mark making. You don't need to do this actually you could just leave it with the um, the fairly deep grooves but I kind of like how it looks with um, with lots of marks on it. So I'm popping in some black clay into the eye sockets and press those down with my ball tool again. So it looks a lot more gothic already. And I'll pop in some teeny tiny balls of white clay. This kind of looks like the um, pumpkin badge I made a little while ago and I'll just link to it above if you've not seen that. So yep yeah, there he is, um, so it's a pretty gothic cartoon style pumpkin by comparison. And now they're ready to bake so you'll need to refer to your own brand of polymer clays baking instructions. So here they are post baking and they're all nice and cool. So I'm using some black acrylic paint here and I've splodged out way too much but oh well. So I just need to coat my pumpkins basically with a nice thick coat of paint. And this is always an enjoyable process. And with my character pumpkin, I'm just being very careful not to put any paints on his eyes because I'd like them to be really white. But you know, you can always paint them white afterwards if you do happen to have a, a paint disaster. So I'm going to leave them for a few minutes so the paint can dry just a little but not too much. So now I need to remove the paint with some wet wipes. And with a wet scourer, I'm just removing any stubborn bits of paint. And now they're dry, I'm using a dry scourer here just to give them a nice buff. So yep, pretty happy with those. And here they are all done. 
Thanks very much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.